FBC for sure, okay? Um, and the title of this speech is a little misleading because anybody that knows anything about CFPC knows that the whole beauty of the technology is that it's capable of burning a wide range of fuels. So it would be Egypt and other coals anyway with the right design and, uh, and specification. So um, it's, it's really what I'm going to try and do in this period is to talk about how circulated computerized bed technology stacks up against pulverized coal technology, because I know that's the thing which is really quite interesting uh, in this part of the world. Um, and uh, my materials are not my own. They're actually two of my staff who have produced reports in the last nine months, one on CFPC developments and the other one on the comparison between CFPC and pulverized coal, which is what I'm concentrating on today. So let's start off by talking for a minute about pulverized coal. We know that it provides about 90% of global coal by um, power capacity. Uh, on the other hand, CFBC offers greater fuel flexibility and low cost emissions reduction because you don't need to FGD, you can do the limestone in bed for the sulfur. And it's, it's naturally lower NOx producing, although very high N2O. Um, what we've been seeing, of course, why we have this reviving interest uh, at a large scale is that um, the, the units have been getting bigger and bigger. Uh, when, for my sins, when I was uh, working for British Coal when such a company existed back in the 1980s, uh, we were looking at putting in CFB units at some of our power stations, as pithead power stations. And at that time, the biggest unit anywhere in the world was about 100 megawatts electrical. That would be about, by about the mid-1980s. Well, nowadays, we're talking up to 600 megawatts, full utility scale. And so that's another area why CFPC has become interesting. You can see the main features, of course, on these two, on the diagrams on this slide. Uh, I'm not going to... Um, try and spend time talking about it, but just to point out, the, the supercritical PC boiler would normally be fitted in, you know, in the Western world fitted with selective capital reduction, uh, it would have new gas desulphurization, although it's not shown there, um, but whereas the supercritical CFB probably got reheated with steam bypass, uh, hot solid return system, of course, is the main feature of it. Um, and the other thing that's particularly noticeable about, uh, oh, sorry, this is carry on with PCC, coal pulverized at 1300 degrees C or above, um, state of the art of superior units, as I was saying this morning, well, right up to 47% if you're um, designing for a base load, big, big unit, um, hard coal. Um, but you do get problems with uh, if you get deviations from design coal, uh, or if you go to high ash content and slagging value, we tend to build up the PC unit, so it's better to stay close to the design coal. Although, having said that, it's worth pointing out that these days a lot of uh, organisations buy coals from different sources and either blend them or burn them sort of one after another. Um, I was talking to people from Malaysia only recently, and they're having huge problems uh, with uh, their few coal fired boilers simply because their procurement people have been sourcing coal from all around the world and haven't realised that all black stuff isn't the same um, and having operational issues. Um, with the CFBC, you've got this high pressure air suspended solid, solid, suspended solid and blue like state, so you get quite long residence times compared with pulverized coal, but you can, you're combusting at much lower temperatures. 800 to 900 degrees C tends to be the, uh, the norm. Um, and as I said before, you, because of the sort of the normal staging you get in the CFPC unit, you get uh, low NOx, and, and as I said before, simple desox by adding limestone or, or to, the, to, the, to the furnace. I uh, pointed out that the, uh, the size of CFPC units was growing. Uh, this slide tends to demonstrate uh, that that comparison with PF with PC boilers. P 
piece this size since 1920. We've gone right up here. We've got units of over 1,200 megawatts in size. There's not very many of those around, uh, but there's lots of units in this sort of area, 600 to 1,000. Uh, CFPC has been creeping up steadily since the 1980s, as I told you my personal experience. 100 megawatts around about the mid 1980s. And here we are, we're now creeping up and we're up to 600 megawatts, um, which is uh, with, with 800 megawatts being commercially, uh, commercially quoted. Here are um, some of the, uh, of the units that we talk about now being, uh, being highlighted on this slide. So uh, there's um, this one here, Lagista, super, super critical unit in Poland, uh, been operating for four years now. This in China, 600 megawatts, uh, it being you know, about to be missed, if I remember correctly, this one is in, in 550, is in Korea. And these are the, the manufacturers, Foster Wheeler, Arsenal, Marvin, Robert Bain. So, Foster Wheeler are so well known in this part of the world, and the, and the two Chinese manufacturers as well. I thought we'd put a couple of slides in, so BHGL's experience by contrast. Um, this a slide provided by BHGL, so I hope they're up to date. Um, so we're talking here, um, coming up this curve from the 1990s now, um, right through to about 250 megawatts, which uh, we're which, uh, what, what in on the net belly lignite. Um, and so you, you can see that, that also we've been building up the experience. I can understand why you'd be wanting to use the CFPC or specifying it for some um, less attractive fuels, um, very, high, very high ash or um, like, like a lignite. Um, but uh, some way behind uh, the, the best in the world in terms of both size and steam conditions. Um, this, this is another way of showing that, that the VHL CFPC technology development uh, going, up is going up over the last 17 years, 18 years. Um, so about the first orders received in different sizes a year. Again, you can see stuff very small, so I've done 125 megawatts and getting up to 150 megawatts over that time. And, and it's interesting that the, the fuels were actually mentioned on this slide as well. Net coat there, and what an all in Indonesia there was quite well, but very well burning a subtubus coal, I would guess. Um, and uh, the lignite up here, um, here for a paper. Another lignite based one. That lignite seems to have been sort of the most common but it hasn't got to be the only thing that has been burned. There are uh, CFPC units which are burning uh, specified an anthracite. One thing I would say is that uh, CFPC units do burn a wide range of fuels. There's no doubt that they can do. But like any other unit, they're probably best burning their specified fuel or fuels that they're designed for. Yeah. Uh, as soon as you start moving significantly away from design specifications, you're likely to have other issues to deal with. Um, another one on, on, on BHL boilers, I've uh, shown the units commissioned um, in 2010. I've forgot where SLPP units are, so somebody will probably tell me from the audience later on. Um, the thing that's been developed in the last few years, apart from going up in size, is the fact that the designers have learned how to do these things with um, other super, uh, supercritical conditions. We're not talking necessarily um, about the first ones being uh, very high steam temperatures. This one in Poland, 460 megawatts, burning local tubers coal. If my memory serves me correctly, was operating at about 540, 550 centigrade, something like that. It's a big steam temperature. Um, the one in Weimar, China, 600 megawatt, um, 
started the operation earlier this year, and that's specified on a high ash anthracite. Uh, the Korean one uh, we mentioned the other is, is nominally uh, under odd super critical conditions, so talk about steam temperatures around about 600 or just above. Um, and that's 4 or 550 megawatt units. But they're under construction, they're scheduled for start up in 2015 with um, uh, four more to follow. And they're expected to burn a wide range of imported coals with up to 20% biomass. And that's another thing about, about CFBs. It's quite normal nowadays that we <laughs> manufacturers will talk about protein burning up to 20% biomass as well as coal or whatever. What is, uh, is clear, I think, is that, that CFBC, because of its flexibility in terms of fuel, um, has been picking up the global market share. Um, we think that it, it has got somewhere between 5 and 7 percent of, of global um, coal fired plant plant capacity. And um, I don't know where the projections for 12 percent growth per year come from, but that was something that was, that was um, reported. Um, and the motivating factors, okay, uh, response to stricter emission limits, uh, exploiting cheaper fuels and availability of, of, of other cheap fuels, particularly waste products, waste coal, pet coke, and so on. Uh, and given that uh, these days um, power companies are finding they have to source power uh, companies which are importing, which is a lot, um, have to source from different markets they feel it gives them some flexibility. Regarding efficiencies, um, combustion efficiency, well, there have been problems reported with, uh, with, with high residual carbon um, for some CFBC units. That's probably to do with controlled operating conditions. Um, boiler efficiency with in-service uh, desulfurization allows boiler ex low boiler ex exit temperatures, so boiler efficiencies are good. Um, on thermal efficiency, um, well, overall, maybe not quite so much, but because you've got fluidizing air fans consuming more power uh, than, than possibly get used with FGD and pulverizers with the PS and PCC systems. Um, but supercritical steam has allowed us a, a, a quite a big jump up in, in CFPC efficiencies. We're seeing 42, 43% now, and um, that's sort of bigger, which is uh, much higher than. Than 10, 15 years ago. On um, auxiliary power consumption, that well, power can be reduced by optimizing the fluidization of state, but that does require control of fuel size distribution. So um, that's not going to be quite so easy to do. And you can see from the graph there that, uh, that whilst you can save some, um, some, some energy, sorry, this, this, yeah, there's the auxiliary power there. Um, Pulverized coal with blue gas desulfurization. Um, and these are all the manufacturer's names, and it was all the units rather um, listed along the bottom there. Where CFBC probably doesn't stand up quite so well with PCC um, it is the on load following. Um, because of that big thermal inertia that you've got in the bed and all that, uh, that big inventory of material there, it's not so easy to wrap it up and down quickly. Um, although, the, on the other hand, hot and warm restarts are relatively easy because you've got this big residue of, of warm material. Um, transit and low loads tend to be um, not so good for, for these sorts of purposes. Uh, on ash, um, very high ash coal can be used in CFPC. We have seen examples of, well, of course, we're thinking coals are very high ash coals, most of them. So, pretty, uh, pretty suitable for that purpose. Um, but uh, low, low, low temperatures tend to reduce slagging and fouling. Although, even in, even in those conditions, we, there are plenty of examples of better collaboration being a problem. One of the things which makes me wonder a little bit about Indian coals with CFPC, and some of you guys probably know more than I do is that um, the erosion damage tends to be quite a concern in some CFBC units, um, particularly of the, of the tubing, tubing. 
Um, the, uh, I know that Indian coals are very abrasive, but I'm not quite sure how that runs in CFPC units. Um, but I can imagine there can be some issues and problems with some special design requirements. Um, initially, when CFPC was sort of getting up to sort sizes, there, there were a lot of problems with availability and reliability. Um, China had a lot of them that went up a big learning curve to get it working. But, um, but things have improved. This slide lists a number of, of different units. So what you see on the left-hand the left hand column of the numbers is the uh, initial availability in the first year of, of operation of different units. And you can see figures there of 59, 87, 78, and so on. And then you can see the availability um, in 2012, last year, and all of them running very much better and, and much more steadily. So people have learned how to, how to manage these beasts. Um, well, this just shows the PCC options for um, fluid gas desulphurization, principally wet FGD or spray dryer FGD. That dry active coke system that I was talking about for Sogo this morning, the, uh, the, the Japanese system, uh, isn't widely disseminated. Although it's very interesting that, um, as an aside, it's very interesting the Chinese look at adopting an almost identical figure as a system for their um, power station building to the to the west side of China, where they've got water problems. Um, on NOx emissions, um, surveying fluid nitrate beds produces about or a lot less than pulverized coal, about sixty percent. It says here. Um, Sometimes uh, SNCI is added to, to meet limits. Um, and there's stuff here about um, relative operating costs. Um, I can't even see the, yeah, the SCR, SNCR, the CFPC plus SNCR um, to, to try and get ourselves down using ammonia and uh, uh, yeah, more produce and then the relative operating cost. And these are not numbers because we don't have numbers, we just look for the relative cost of these things. SCR are very expensive. Um, so, um, so um, and then note, noticeable that the, the boilers of Samchuk in Korea would use SCR to be a, limit, a very low limit of 50 ppm of, of NOx. And it may be necessary for all these large boilers in order to get, get down to low NOx levels. Um, nitrous oxide, N2O, is a particular issue with CFPC units. Um, N2O uh, is produced in significant concentrations, but we're talking about PPM level, but still significant, uh, because it's 300, has 300 times the greenhouse effect of CO2. So we do think that, uh, that at some point, if that the CFPC units start getting uh, widespread, that there may well be um, regulation coming in on those issues. Uh, could be baited with SNCR or, or certain kind of reduction or after burning, of course that adds to expense. On ash, ash recycling or reusing, reusing ash, CFPC again has a little bit of an issue compared with polarized coal. Um, you get high levels of lime and hydrite in, uh, in CFPC ash, it tends to be self-cementing. Um, it's not approved in most jurisdictions for use in concrete. People, uh, a lot of PCC ash gets used that way, but not a lot of uh, CFPC ash. Um, so it tends to get mostly used in mine reclamation activities, neutralizing acid soils or sealing off acid, acid drainage. And there's some specifications there for um, PCC ash versus um, CFPC ash. CFPC column, C silica versus PCC 52.7. They're really quite different, as you can see, quite different um, specifications, so quite different materials. Um, so CFPC ash tends to get low grade construction applications, waste stabilization, agricultural use. Um, and of course, you get more of it. Um, with uh, CNBC because you've got the added limestone. Whereas the pulverized coal produces wet 
which is that FGD, with, with wet FGD rather uses um, coal ash which could be sold and, and, and uh, possibly gypsum. Uh, CFPC also gets used uh, widely for, um, can be used widely for with biomass firing, co firing in Sweden and Finland. Actually, that's a misstatement. Uh, I'm going to take task on my guys for that. I know that CFPC actually started out going way back with small thermal units back into the 1960s and 70s as a technique for burning up wood wastes. It was only later that CFPC started to be applied to coal. It started with, uh, with burning wood wastes. But today, uh, most large CFP units produce, particularly fossil fuel, or offer a 10 to 20 percent co firing capability as a more standard thing, so that can be quite useful. Um, you can feed coarser fuels, uh, you don't have to go down to the extent of pulverizing down to small micron sizes. It says here you get less problems with slagging, that's because of the lower temperatures of operation. Um, and, uh, but agricultural waste can cause problems with CFPC. There must be some instances of getting agglomeration problems when producing certain, ag certain ag agricultural wastes. I want to say something just in passing about oxy CFB, um, oxy fuel based, you know, their separation using oxygen. Um, this is a technique which I know you're interested in here in, 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 in India, in BHL in particular, but other organizations are, are looking at it as well. Um, the picture on this slide is of a facility at Thud in Spain, which uh, is a splendid uh, place for testing um, CFBC for oxy fuel combustion. It's been this particular thing, and they actually have a, a PC unit next to a CFBC unit for getting comparative purposes. Uh, it's actually a Foster Wheeler supply uh, unit there. And then also we can do this link to doing carbon capture. Um, what they say is that the heat transfer from circulating solids allows higher oxygen concentrations, gives you a smaller boiler. Um, they operate at positive boiler pressure, so that reduces air ingress. And the lower excess air that you, that you use um, reduces oxygen demand per kilowatt, and you don't need to use different burners. Having said all that, um, this 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 small demonstration must go a pilot facility in Spain is operating, is operational and it's remain operational through till next spring but uh, Spain Spain's government is under sort of severe financial pressures and it's not at all sure what its, um, what its future is going to be beyond the middle of next year which would be a shame uh, there is some data here on capital costs Estimates of CFPC capital costs are beginning to approach those of PCC. Um, the boiler equipment is, is still more expensive, but that's balanced against the lack of fluid gas desulfurization equipment, um, SCR maybe, and, and pulverizers, because again, you can be putting a, a, a course of feed. So I'm not sure what the origin of these numbers are, but you can see. Um, I'm pretty sure that probably in Foster Wheeler numbers. Well, no, I'll stop that, sorry. Um, but you can see the comparisons there um, that we're talking about, of course, that will be the blue gas desulfurization, maybe 300 versus zero. I don't know where the contingency is coming. The total plant cost we're talking about something which is, well, fairly similar in, the, in all the truth. I mean, the operation and maintenance cost are much the same, and the um, zero, that's it. Is that also similar? This, this, is, this is the one that people tend to look at mostly, and um, it's, it's not that far away, it's only a few percentage points. So, what we're saying is that they're, they're, they're becoming very similar. So, in summary, um, CFPC has got to the point nowadays where it's achieved competitive efficiency and costs. Um, fuel flexibility is a feature uh, that sa can be sacrificed for high efficiency and reliability. In other words, if you want the highest possible efficiencies and reliability, you would still design around a particular um, fuel. Um, we do think that strict emission standards might make it more difficult to operate CFPC uh, with high sulfur coals. 
Um, that's not a problem, of course, here in India, where you've got low sulfur coals, and um, where the, the coals are going to export here for a low sulfur. Um, CFPC ash markets are rather limited because of the nature of the ash, uh, but there is a high potential for biomass, and we think in the future possibly for oxy fuel. Um, Having talked about 5 to 7% of the world market being with CFBC and growing, uh, there's no doubt that, that if CFBC is going to take on make a bigger market penetration, then it depends very much on adoption of the technology in China and here in India. Thank you for listening, and I uh, see the acknowledgements there to Toby Lockwood, who wrote a comparative report. I'm Kim Chen Zhu by Clinical Center who did the report on CFPC developments. Thank you.